Hello Model Railroaders, I'm Dave. Welcome back to The Layout, a project uh, that's been on my to-do list that I'm getting to is dealing with making my own refinery storage tanks. Now, in a previous video I had mentioned of uh, using some sheet styrene and then gluing that on and my thought had been to load the inside up with sand and then use a uh, heat gun to holding holding it upside down like this uh, use a heat gun on the bottom and the weight of the sand would deform the styrene hopefully to make a dome shaped and then just go back and fill in uh, the around the edge there with uh, any putty filler. Uh, the stuff I bought is to me a putty. Uh, that's what I had access to. So, uh, unfortunately, it was a fail, a big time fail. In fact, uh, I'm just lucky that the, I was able to recover the sheet styrene back into a more horizontal, uh, predominantly flat uh, surface afterwards that uh, heating it up with the heat gun domed a little bit of it, not as much as I had hoped and then when I tried to soften it more it just deformed whatever dome that I had previously made and trying to do that over a bucket in case the CA glue let go uh, it was an epic fail. However, that wasn't the end. I thought, all right, how am I going to make a dome? And I've got lots of uh, scrap foam that uh, where I previously lived, they were working on a new house and had a whole bunch of foam bits uh, from doing the uh, insulation under the siding uh, that were in a pile ready to go so uh, I asked the guy if that was garbage and he said yes and I said would you mind if I take some and uh, that I'm in a model railroading and I can use it for my scenery and he went no take all you want just you know make sure that you don't uh, spread it around the neighborhood you know that uh, if you dispose of it dispose of it properly and appropriately. So I went, thank you very much, I shall follow your instructions and uh, I've got lots of it. Now some of it's not usable that I may just use as fill which as you can see here a lot of the uh, styrene layers or the foam layers I should say uh, is in fact that foam and you know there's some of it there. Now I did go out and buy uh, new foam uh, for uh, the risers and stuff like that because I, I wanted it to be two inch but uh, a lot of the one inch foam that I've been using on my layout was essentially garbage foam from a construction site. Now how am I going to deal with making this dome? Well I've done a couple of trial runs and I'll show you what I've got so far. Now, the shorter tank, or the narrower tank, uh, I think that's a little too much of a dome on that. That uh, it's just not shallow enough. Uh, so I tried on the larger tank, on a piece that I had uh, roughed out, and I'm more happy, or happier, with the height of that dome, uh, that it looks more prototypical. And uh, I think I'll go with that. Now, from this point on, if I want multiple tanks, what's easier to make a blank that I'm happy with and I'm going to call this a dome blank 
that I'm happy with and say I want six tanks. Do I spend 50 some odd dollars on getting some of the uh, casting medium, the uh, OMO 25, and you know, make my own silicone mold of, because I'm out at this point, just to insert that, I'm actually out of that. So I'd have to go buy some. Well, how long did it actually take me to fabricate that blank? And really, once I got some of the stuff set up, it only took maybe 15 minutes to shape that dome. So do I care that some domes may be a little shaped slightly differently as far as the height of the dome. Well, no, I don't really care. That's the where it's going to be on the layout. If someone's looking at it that closely for the number of tanks that I'm going to make, being only, you know, maximum six of each, it's not worth the money when I've already got the foam materials kicking around as essentially scrap. Uh, it's just my time. And once I set up a bit of a production line, then it won't be that big of a deal. So, just to give you a very brief overview, and I'll do another video where I make one from scratch, uh, that I I'm essentially taking some scrap foam and tracing out both of the exterior contours of the uh, connection fitting, the ABS plumbing uh, connection fitting out of the foam so I know what I'm looking at and then rough cutting closer so I'm not dealing with a lot of excess foam on either side and just took a scrap piece of plywood, a couple of C-clamps, and uh, some of the Woodland Scenics uh, canthal or nichrome wire, uh, depending on you know what you want to call it, it's the same thing. Uh, I knew I wanted uh, to take my inch thick foam and split it to half inch so I just found something that was half an inch thick and in this case it's some uh, gear clamps and essentially just strung the wire between the the two C clamps now when I did that directly without the spring when I turned the heat on or turned the power on I should say which caused the nichrome to heat up the wire sagged on me so I knew I needed some tension, so I looked around, find, found a mild spring uh, that's just enough to give me some, some tension that when it heats up, it uh, retains that tension. As far as the power supply goes, I'm actually using my Woodland Scenics power supply, which is a 9-volt... Uh, AC 1.3 amp output and since I'm using the Woodland Scenics wire I figured hey you know what's gonna heat it up hot enough for me now it does not I don't wait I should say for the wire to glow red hot to run through the foam as soon as it starts uh, giving some smoke from the foam residue I start running the foam through it and I'm able to get through the foam piece without it distorting too badly from the heat, uh, which I'll kind of show you here. There's a piece there that went through, and you know, there's a couple striations where I kind of res reset my hand, uh, where I minutely paused as I was dragging it across. But uh, you know, for the most part, it's smooth enough and this is going to be the surface that is going to be ground away anyway to make the dome so I'm using the factory side as my bottom not that big of an issue uh, 
So how did I do it? Well, I just took the regular AC adapter and because I deal with, well, electronics to a certain amount, as I scrap an old piece or somebody gives me a piece of non-working electronics, if it's got a jack to it, I always save the, the, uh, the jack and of course I save the power supplies from other things. So grit finding a jack wasn't too big of a deal for me. Now, if you've got a, a wall wart power supply that would work, say it's around 9 volts DC and, you know, around an amp or something like that, and you cut the end of the jack off, you could use that uh, directly uh, to attach to uh, a couple of uh, alligator clip leads. And then I just connected that to the end of the wires. Uh, so essentially, if that's all I did, I didn't want to chop the end of my jack off because I still want to use the, the Woodland Scenics uh, foam cutter. So I just dug around through my bin and found uh, the adapter and then connected it up to the leads and connected that up to uh, the end of the wire so that I'm uh, charging the, the wire with electrical current and uh, you know, don't have to really worry about uh, anything else. I'm just making sure I'm not touching and uh, shorting through my uh, steel uh, cart that I've got everything rested on. But this is just a very quick temporary setup uh, to slice my foam to the thickness that I want. Now, if I wanted something different than a half an inch, well, I'd have to find uh, ideally some spacers that would be to the height that I want my foam to be cut to and then you know insert one on in on either side to give that uh, assurance because uh, the spring even though it's under tension uh, it will deflect down and I want to ensure that I've got that uh, flatness of cut across the piece that I want to fabricate. Uh, so that's predominantly it. I'll do another video uh, on the whole process of going from a raw block to uh, cutting it and, uh, and shaping it. Uh, I'm just using uh, a drill and a belt sander. Uh, I've got a, a mandrel that uh, was from uh, a very cheap cutoff disc uh, that I found uh, that was just something with a, a shaft and a, uh, a flat point that I could super glue to the foam which worked out very well in fact to get it off the foam I have to actually break the, uh, the foam away but it's going to be on the bottom of the the tank anyway, so who cares uh, if there's a blemish in the bottom of the foam. Now, I did learn on my first trial not to cut the uh, dome exactly to size as a pre-cut because uh, I'd have to do a lot of uh, filling in and smoothing out uh, when it doesn't exactly match up after cutting it and uh, doing the, a little bit of sanding and such. So what I've done is I've actually cut it oversized, as you can see from the, uh, the pencil line that I just drag around uh, initially, that uh, I've got a little bit of overlap there. I don't personally care that the dome is going to be dead center on the tank top. Again, it's a background building. Uh, it's not taking center point on the on the layout, but I think once I cut the foam or glue the foam down, cut it to the shape of the tank wall to make sure I've got a good joint, go around with any of the Tamiya uh, putty filler 
to take up any voids and then uh, give it a primer coat of paint uh, I do believe it'll look pretty good so we'll deal with that in another video but uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, the incentive or the creational aspect of uh, the hobby sometimes you just get dragged down and focused on other things and uh, you lose that spark for a little bit and right now I've uh, had some time to focus on uh, on a project and I figured all right let's knock out a prototype and take it to the final stage and then uh, let's get one of these projects off the plate because the uh, rock crusher I'm waiting for the other uh, pillow bearing block to come in so that's kind of gotten off to the side it's stupidly hot out and uh, I'm not one that lo is a lover of uh, you know uh, heat in the 90 Fahrenheit or in the 30 Celsius uh, with uh, you know 75 80 percent humidity I don't do well outside in that kind of weather so uh, uh, air conditioned basement and the layout perfect place for me uh, but anyway we'll end the, this video at this point hopefully uh, you're enjoying your AC and uh, working on your layout as well talk to you in the next video bye for now